Okay, so before I get started on this video, for real, just some quick housekeeping. I don't mean like cleaning up around the house housekeeping, but first and foremost, I will be putting a link for the Tunnel to Towers Foundation in the description of this video. If you feel strongly about the cause, highly recommend that you donate. Secondly, I told some people in person that I would be recording the run itself. However, it had said on the website that they would not be okay with photography and video. Even though I saw other people doing it, I thought it'd be disrespectful to follow suit. And so this video is going to be more of a reflection. I'm sure you will still enjoy it, which leads me to my third point, which is that if you've been enjoying my content, then highly recommend that you subscribe if you have not already. And if you leave, like this video, leave a like. And also, if you want to stay notified, hit that bell, kind of like you do before you take those exams on that iPad. All right. Hello, everyone. It's Triple T. I did something really cool for an amazing cause today. So what this is, I am wearing a bib for the Tunnel to Towers 5K run, although it's actually 5.6K, three and a half miles. So... Here's a little story of how it all started out. So um, my wake up for today was at 4.30 in the morning after going to bed around two o'clock. I was doing some ringside doctor stuff for a local MMA bout. So start out with some pancakes, Greek yogurt, and not a protein bar, I'm thinking. A protein shake, close enough. So um, I scoffed all that down, I finished around 5.15, and I had more time than I was expecting. I guess maybe skipping the tea helped out a bit. So we leave. I left around 5.35-ish, got to headquarters about five minutes later, and I patiently waited for the EMTs and firefighters to arrive for this amazing event. So we left around 6.05 in the morning, of course in the morning, and... I honestly wasn't really in the mood to go to sleep during that first period. I was more in the mood to talk and catch up with everyone. I have been struggling to keep up with the fire department as much as I would like because I've just been so busy in med school. Partially explaining my lack of recent uploads. Hold on. So firstly... I totally forgot that I was not supposed to wear my turnout gear in that part of the fire department. And secondly, we also had an emergency call come through. So I knew right then and there, I'd have to continue the video at a later time. And turns out a later date. I just felt so gross after I suspended until now. It's a Thursday, it's four days after the run. I got my interviews with my coworkers, if you want to call them that, it's volunteering. I got those interviews the day of the event. I was still wearing my fire gear. And so you're going to see another change of attire later. Man, this is getting more convoluted than the SAW timeline. I'm not going to lie, SAW 10, looking very hype. Got to see it in theaters. So to continue the story... We arrived at Ikea around 7.05, an hour after we'd left. We got our bibs. We were on like the 22,000 ballpark, part of Wave D. They were giving out the shirts there. We totally forgot about it. We had tunnel vision on getting the bibs and pins. And so we missed them. However, they will be sending us our shirts through the mail. So... I didn't think it was a big deal that we didn't get our shirts then there, but there is some compensation anyway. It's cool. So there is a bus for a New Jersey fire department, not remembering which one, but um, we kind of had a ride or die moment, no pun intended, because um, we were kind of parked around the same spot. However, it turns out that they kind of were unloaded, and so like, they went somewhere, we got lost following them, and so we had to go all the way back to the race start area. We were following them for no, not as good of a reason as we thought. 
So it took us well. We got there around 8.30. Much, took much longer than we expected. So we just hung out for about an hour, last minute preparation for the race. We took some photos before the race started. That's completely okay. Like there was one, like the Battalion 101, we took the photo at one of those stations, if I remember properly. And then around 9.30, that's when the festivities began. We were kind of scattered at one point because of all the photo taking. And we had a half hour to regroup. Like we all eventually were able to catch up before the starting line. We were on the Jumbotron and it was really cool. It was making a bunch of silly poses. We all were. And then when we start, it was 10 o'clock. And so I was very excited and nervous at the same time. I have not been keeping up with my cardio at all. Legitimately, I'd done Taekwondo two weeks before the run and I can only go one minute of sparring and I was totally gassed out. So I really had extremely low expectations going in. So I started with a very slow jog. There were 10 people in our organization. It was me and two others at the front. So it was me, Richie, and Chad. You will be meeting them later on in this video. Let me take a break to breathe. I just can't like record for several minutes straight and I'm so afraid of messing up and having to start everything over again. Just don't mind me. So as I was doing the slow jog at the the start of the race, I had noticed a couple of things. So firstly, the gear was not as heavy as I was expecting. I'd say maybe it was like three pounds. I haven't gone the scale with it, but um, this also leads to another point, which was that I wasn't nearly as gassed out as I thought I was going to be going into this, you know, especially given how before this, I couldn't even go a minute of sparring Taekwondo. But, um, so I'm still hearing Raining Blood by Slayer. I'm still hearing that rain portion of the intro. And then we start to get into the tunnel and Richie and Chad, the other two forerunners from my fire department, they start to speed up and I kept up right with them. I was approximately at the horizontal. You do have to consider the other human traffic conditions too where we weren't able to run a perfectly straight line, but point and behold, I was keeping up very nicely, much better than I was expecting. It wouldn't be long until I was starting to exhale rather forcefully while I was running. They were kind of like, dude, are you all right? But yeah, I was living a dream at that moment. Honestly, just being able to breathe that hard, tell myself, that I was working for this felt all the more rewarding. Then a short distance after the start of the tunnel, I also started to see the camera crew taking pictures, videos, and all that good jazz. And I had even more incentive to stay strong. Like just for some reason, the fact that I'm being watched, even though the most important thing is what I see within myself, you know, this is for a very good cause. So I just wanted to stay strong for that reasoning. And so I did to the best of my ability. And objectively speaking, for my objectives, I would say that it was very successful. So we were probably going around like a low eight minute pace, maybe mid. And I was very tired. I'm just like, hey, Chad, how far are we through this race? And we were about like, 1.33 miles and I couldn't believe that we'd gone that far and I was holding up just like that but I noticed that some people were starting to slow down some of them even Richie had to take a step back but he will come back later trust me but there were some fire departments that are honestly like they were absolutely killing it and seeing all of these other fire departments strong, I really loved the morale at the event. It's definitely one of the standout factors. I think that 
I'll talk more about it, but just like the ergonomics to that in that regard were just top of notch. They were very motivating, kind of like um, playing Avenged Sevenfold while you're at the gym. Oh gosh, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I actually told people I listened to that stuff. If you're actually a fan, that's totally okay. I'm just playing around. But um, so it was around like 1.89 1.89 miles where um, that's when I really started to feel it. I was absolutely winded. And at that point, I was already very proud of what I had accomplished. And so I knew that I had nothing more to really prove to myself. So as I was at that point of near exhaustion, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel, quite literally. We were about three quarters of the way through the tunnel by this time, a little bit more. I'm exhausted. I'm not slowing down just yet, but I feel like my body is going to give out. And so I start to slow down a little bit in. I tell Chad, you know, hey, I don't think I can do this for much longer. Once I reach the end of the tunnel, I'm going strictly for a walk, but I'm starting to slow down now. Just go ahead of me. And so we tell each other we're going to see each other at the end of the finish line. We fist bump and he really goes past me. And so, like, that was such a nice touch of sportsmanship, companionship right there. I found it very memorable. Other people start to pass me, and that was fine with me because I'd already been proud of what I'd done thus far. And so once I make it out of the tunnel, there's a bunch of people, like a lot of people, who are in the fire service. They were holding up photos of firefighters who had died during 9-11, who had bravely sacrificed themselves, gone to that building, not knowing whether they would come out alive or knew that they weren't coming out of alive. You know, I really honor and I really honor, what's the word? Respect these men who had done that. And just seeing the whole morale there, that really made me want to keep on going. But my body had had it at that time. So to compromise with the cognitive dissonance that I was facing, I said that I would start to, I would go for a run eventually, but I was just going to cool down. Eventually, even Richie passed me. Why am I saying even? My man, I'm so proud of you for keeping on going. I'm so proud of you, man. Really fine work. And so I decided, I went about half a mile with the walk, there were still people cheering us on, all the people in the service. And at this half at this half mile, I saw this under, I would guess you can say underpass, an intersection. And I thought it would be a good moment to start jogging again. And so I did. I was probably going a touch slower than I was when I was inside the tunnel. But any type of jogging pace for me was a victory in my books. And so I kept with it. At some point, the people in the fire service started to thin out, and there were civilians on the sidelines. And so they were all cheering for us. They had a high-five train going, so as I was running past, I had my hand out, and we were all high-fiving each other. It was so wholesome and nice. And um, eventually, once we got to around the marina or whatever, I saw this ramp ahead and the traffic started narrow. So we're all going very slowly. I'm still doing my heavy exhalation. And there's this guy behind me who says to me that he really loves my energy. And so honestly, the motivation just really continued from there on out. And so once he made out of the ramp, the guy literally started screaming. So I felt, I'm just like, ah, I have absolutely no shame for that. And Headphone users, I hope that wasn't too terrible. As we're rounding out the finish line, there's live music. There's someone playing The Trooper by Iron Maiden. It felt like such a suitable song just by the title itself. And so as I cross the, I'm about to cross the finish line, I just, I'm so tired I can't even speed up anymore. My body had just had it. I was doing the very best I can, I could, and... The very best I could was obviously good enough. I made it. And really, the suffering that I endured on that day of sacrifice 
just felt so rewarding for me personally. So at the end of the finish line, there are a bunch of amenities. So they had a Dunkin' Donuts coffee truck. They had a barbecue with hot dogs, cheeseburgers, and hamburgers. I just felt so gross. I did not want to touch anything. And I didn't want anyone to touch me. And that's where they had um, massage. They had like massage beds outside. There was a lady there who offered us, you know, to go up there. I'm just like, trust me, no one wants to touch me right now. And then she's just like, um, they're used to it. They've had worse. I'm just like, uh, I don't know about that. Because me, I was already soaking wet from all my fire gear. Well, because of all the rain and addition to all the sweating. And so I would have felt absolutely terrible for anyone who would have had to work on me. So my back is absolutely ruined. No amount of OMM soft tissue would ever fix me, nor would any HVLA. And they also had some live music. So there was a band there playing, covering Chicago, really good band. They're the ones who sing like, um, feeling stronger every day. If you leave me now, five to one, really good songs. The rest of the fire department eventually caught up. I either finished second or third because, um, once again, Richie did eventually pass me. I don't know if I passed him, but of course, what matters most is how I feel about myself exiting the run. And so, um, we all hung out there for a while, waited for everyone in the fire department to finish. We took some more photos. And then around 1230, we took a ferry back to the van. And I'm telling you, there was a storm brewing. It was absolutely terrible. Like it had rained that morning. During the run itself, it stopped raining, even though like right before it was still going on. But then it literally started to downpour. And there was nothing that could really get me going to run all the way back to the van besides the fact that I didn't have the keys. But um, it ended up being a very late day. We got back to headquarters at 2.30 in the afternoon, and I had a lot of studying to catch up on. My trapezius, I would say my trapezius muscles were actually the most sore from all that running, interestingly. At least the day of the event, However, the next day, I really started to feel it in my thighs, like my quadriceps and my hammies. I don't remember where exactly I felt it the most, though. But um, really, all that that I endured was, was all completely worth it. All of the sleep that I lost, the two and a half hours I was running on, the studying I need to catch up on, I was so glad that I did it. It was for an amazing cause, and... One thing I also want to tell everyone is that not all heroes are wearing the fire gear. Of course, during 9-11, there were even civilians who helped other people out of the building at the cost of their own lives. And so I also want to dedicate this video to those people in addition to the firemen. And thank you all for your service and your sacrifice. I am now going to give the rest of this video to testimonials. Hey, so this is Chad. What's going on? He's a real Chad, especially after how he did today. So my first question for you is, how did you prepare for the Tunnels to Towers run? I prepared for the event by going on runs the last three weeks, doing about three to four miles a day. Uh, some days I would do about, I would do go do some weightlifting, go to the gym. It hasn't helped me. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, no, that's just how I prepared. Okay. So um, why don't you tell everybody about how you were doing, how you felt during the event, even before and after. Okay. So um, before, um, now this ties into your next question coming up about weather. Um, so before the event, I felt fine. I mean, it was a little wet. It was raining a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I wore all these layers. I'm still wearing them right now. <laughs> Um, I didn't feel too hot. Um, I felt good, ready to run. Uh, during the event, um, I started to get sweaty because we're going to we're going to the tunnel. I ha I still had the three layers on. I was getting really soaked. And, um, before, and towards the end, after we got out of the tunnel, because we were running around a few streets, had a lot of puddles. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I was nervous about that. Yes, but maybe yeah. And then afterwards, um, I 
afterwards I felt, of course, exhausted, but mm -hmm. felt accomplishing to finally eat some food as well because I was starving. Definitely. Those burgers did look good, but I wasn't up to that. Yes. <laughs> so um, my next question was about how the conditions during the event played into your performance. So like all of the people who are like walking or jogging at different speeds. It the was weather. more of the people you saw, like, because you were running with me that yes. we had. We had a number of people running their own paces and there's such limited room in the tunnel when we're running. So it's a lot of like slalom going around people. It, oh, it, oh, it, closer towards the end, it gets even more narrow because you're going around like the bay area. Oh, yes. Yeah, and we also had like that, not really staircase, but that ramp that was very crowded. Yeah. So I'm just, I personally, I was just like jogging, like not in place, but like very slowly as we were going up. Yeah. The weather wasn't that bad. The weather was bad when we were walking back. Oh, yeah. We got so. <laughs> that was fun. And now, um, how do you plan on recovering? Because I know that you're very exhausted. Are you going to eat a lot of food, take a nap? Yeah, I'm going to get shower, clean up, uh, have some food. Uh, hey, this is Richie. Oh, this hey. is Richie. He also ran with us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to cover, like, take it easy next few days. Um, I, don't have, I don't have any races coming up. I mean, I was thinking about doing our one next week, but I don't know if that's going to happen. All right, take as much time as you need. You worked very hard for this, and I did. you did great. I did. My heel, like, still has pain to this day from, like, my old days back in track and field, so I got to go easy on that, too. Ah, old track and field days. Thank you yeah. so much. You did great on this. Yeah, of course. Hey, everyone. So this is Richie. I gave a little intro in Chad segment. So um, let's start by asking you the same question as Chad. So how do you prepare for the event? So normally I go to the gym uh, on the morning, mornings, Monday through Friday, hit the gym over here at headquarters. Some days I do upper body, other days lower body, and then the others cardio. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit more about your cardio? So like um, treadmill, elliptical, what are, the set, what are the settings that you do? Okay, so for the treadmill, I do about five to six miles uh, an hour. And I do that for, let's say, 30 minutes on an incline of maybe 10 to 20. All right, that sounds pretty good. I also try to do something similar on the elliptical and just try to vary. So I, I change it up some days. So one day I do treadmill, then I know the next day I try to do elliptical. Other days I just maybe even jog outside. Or That's make, good. Hit, go hiking. Try hiking. to mix it up. That's good. Well, yeah. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree because <laughs> it's going to get and, worse. And before the um, daylight savings kicks in especially. That too. It's going to make it <laughs> darker to run. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see where I'm going. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, my next question for you is about how you felt um, before, during, and after the run. So before the run, I felt excited. I felt like um, I was ready to get hit the ground running, gun hole. So that was before the run. So during the run, I was keeping a steady pace at the beginning. Normally when I run, I start off a little faster than usual. And then my pace does slow down a bit. So I did lose some of the guys midway through the weight race. Mm -hmm. But I, I, did see, like, I did see you pass me actually after okay. I stopped. So I did pass you. You did. You were doing very well though. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that was during the race. And then after the race, soreness, let's say. So I, I do feel, I, I was excited that I, I made it through the finish line, mm -hmm. but I do feel my body is sore now. My legs are a bit legs? sore. Yeah, mostly my legs. And it's just sweat as well. So Oh, I, also, I get the sweat all too well. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and that's how I feel. Yeah, so I guess that's a great segue into my next question. I'll do things a little bit out of order. So um, how do you plan on recovering from the run? So I, I am going to take a couple of days off, most likely. So I try to go to the gym Monday to Fridays in the morning. So today is Sunday. Monday, I might take maybe a two days off. Okay. Say, just to recover. Probably, I, I could still do my upper body because I don't feel soreness there, but for okay. my cardio, I might just take a day off or two. Understandable. And lastly, how do you think the conditions during the event played into your performance? So like human traffic, rain, weather? I would say, well, human traffic, yes. I was bumping and trying to <laughs> cut through a lot of people. So that's one Same. thing <laughs> just to get through. Uh, it was raining uh, drizzle here and there so that also I, I guess slowed me down because I didn't want to slip anywhere or fall oh me too so I did slow down on those uh, areas but other than that I felt like it was uh, decent yeah it worked out for me and I'm glad I made it, it worked, awesome yeah well I'm glad you did it with me you did great and <laughs> thank you you as well thank you for the questionnaire of course anytime really Happy appreciate it pleasure 
So this has been my experience with the Tunnel to Towers 5K. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this may motivate you to challenge your limits, not limit your challenges, as the bodybuilder William Tennyson says. And once again, I would really like to thank all the people who had served us on the day of 9-11 and those who had passed away. I'm going to end this video with a moment of silence. Thank you.